So guys, Armour 3's brand new Creator DLC, SOG Prairie Fire, just came out, and it already looks like it's shaping up to be probably the biggest thing we've seen in the game since Contact. And so the question is then, what's it all about, and is it actually worth playing? Well guys, this is Billy Eat World again, and let's find out. Alright guys, how you going? Welcome to the video and like I said today, we're taking a first look at SOG Prairie Fire. But just before we get into that though, I just want to point out that all of the gameplay that you can see in this video was actually captured in the new Prairie Fire port of Direct Action. Now, if you don't know what Direct Action is, basically in a nutshell, it's a massive open world dynamic co-op game mode that I actually built. So if you want to check out everything the new DLC has to offer, definitely consider downloading Direct Action Prairie Fire and checking it out. And as always, I'll leave all the links down in the description. But anyway, that shameless plug is over. So to kick off, we probably should actually start by talking about what Prairie Fire actually is. And well, basically it's the new Vietnam War themed update for Armour 3. But the question is, is it a mod or is it a DLC? Well, the answer is it's actually kind of both. It's technically paid official DLC, but it's also basically a total conversion mod. And not just that, but it's been developed by a community team called Savage Game Studios. So it's official, but it's not technically produced in-house. But before we get into that, let's talk about what you actually get in Prairie Fire. And well, first up, there's a massive new map called Cam Leo Nam. There's four new factions, and the devs have also put together a new campaign and nine multiplayer scenarios. And most importantly, I think the devs have built a new open world game mode called Mike Force, which is currently in beta, but you can download it on the Steam Workshop if you want to give it a try. Now, just that mode in itself, I think, deserves its own video. So this review will actually probably end up being a two-parter. This is going to be more of an overview review, and we'll get into the game modes in the next video. So keep an eye out for that one in the next few days. And when it is finally live, I'll make sure I leave a link to the video in the description down below. Now, I've got to say, when I first heard that Prairie Fire was coming, I was a little bit skeptical. And the reason for that is because the last similar community DLC we got for Armour 3 was Global Mobilization, and that unfortunately wasn't as popular as it probably could have been. There's nothing really wrong with Global Mobilization, but the real issue a lot of people had with it was that it was effectively a paid version of the kind of thing you'd already expect to get for free on the workshop. And not just that, but the Cold War Germany theme I think was honestly probably a little bit too niche. I mean, it's interesting and definitely unique, but I just don't think it was ever going to attract widespread appeal. Now, Prairie Fire, on the other hand, being that it's set in the Vietnam War, already has the advantage when it comes to the theme. And not just that, but it seems like Savage really understood that if you're going to expect people to pay for essentially what is a mod, it needs to set itself apart from the stuff that you get on the workshop. And in that sense, I really think they've succeeded. I mean, sure, it's not perfect, but generally all of the assets are top tier and it's definitely got its own unique character as well. The devs have clearly worked really hard on adding a lot of little details, the kind of things that other mod developers just don't bother adding because it's not that important. Well, these guys have actually bothered in Prairie Fire. So what do I mean by this? Well, to start with, the new map is on the scale of Altus, but it's got the depth of detail of Tanoa. And not just that, but the devs have really tried to focus on, I'm not going to say authenticity, but definitely historical believability. The map is almost like a country in itself. It's obviously not to scale, but you'll notice a lot of important cities are represented like Saigon and Hanoi and Huey. And not just that, but from the terrain to the vegetation to the buildings, you can tell there's been a ton of time spent on trying to make the map feel immersive. Also, I should mention almost all of the assets are on another level as well. The devs have created or recreated almost everything you can find in Armour 3 in the Vietnam War theme. Almost everything you can see around you, every vehicle, every piece of gear, every prop, feels completely new. This isn't just the typical copy, paste and retexture job. 
Also, just like in Contact, they've completely redesigned the UI. It literally feels like you're booting up a completely new game when you load Prairie Fire. And once again, I don't mean they've just reskinned the UI. Some things like the multiplayer server browser are completely different in this one. And once again, it's not a huge point, but it's just one of the little things that make this mod stand out from everything else you're likely to find on the workshop. Now, beyond the menus, as you start to actually get into the game, you're gonna realize there's much more detail than you first thought. And look, I'm not even sure that I've discovered every detail yet. Like for example, a lot of the new weapons have really detailed custom animations. And for example, your character even shifts gears when you're driving the Jeeps. There's also a new gesture system and a bunch of other cool features like a built-in earplug system, a vehicle dynamic loadout module, and melee combat. But most importantly, I think the most impactful change the devs have made is what they've done with the sound and the visual effects. Once again, it just makes the game feel completely new. For example, one of the new audio features is that you can now hear nearby enemies talking to each other. And not just that, but your teammates actually talk to each other as well. But probably the thing you're gonna notice the most is that when one of your teammates gets wounded, they actually start screaming for help until you actually heal them up. That's kind of insane. Also, I should mention what they've done with the sound of gunshots and explosions is just awesome. And it seems like there's new explosion effects to go along with that as well. And as a nice, neat little touch, buildings can actually catch on fire as well, which might seem like a small, insignificant thing. But once again, the point I'm trying to make is it's all of those small little things that make the difference in this mod. Now, as impressive as all of this probably seems, Prairie Fire isn't actually without its flaws. And I think from a mission maker's perspective, one of the big issues is that the factions aren't as complete as they seem like they should be. Like I said, there's four new factions, the US Army, the ARVN, the PAVN, and the Viet Cong. But the thing is, they're all lacking in certain areas. The US Army, or MACV as it's called in game, is definitely the most fleshed out. You've got a lot of infantry roles and a lot of sub factions, but what you're missing is vehicles. There's a good selection of helicopters and the new F4 Phantom, but when it comes to ground vehicles, there's basically only just Jeeps, trucks, and the Walker Bulldog tank. Now, that might seem like it's enough, but you're missing out on things like armored cars, APCs, and cargo aircraft. And that's just the US faction. The situation with the ARVN and the OP4 factions is even worse. There's no proper enemy tanks and there's almost no air vehicles and definitely no fighter aircraft. If you're an infantry player, look, that might not even affect you that much, but it's kind of sad that we've got this massive new map and not enough assets to make really decent combined arms missions. So for the moment, and at least until the devs add in some more stuff, especially for the enemy factions, well, I'm going to have to resort to running mods like Unsung alongside Prairie Fire to fill the gap, and I'm sure a lot of other mission makers are as well. Now, bearing all of that in mind, and speaking of Unsung, the question is then, is Prairie Fire even actually worth it, especially considering Vietnam-era mods like Unsung are already available for free on the workshop? And look, in my opinion, that's a no-brainer. Unsung is a bit like Cup in the sense that it's got a ton of assets, but the quality can range from acceptable to pretty sketchy. In this version of Direct Action, I'm really only running the Unsung vehicles that I absolutely have to, and not all of them work as intended anyway. For example, the C-130 in Unsung flies okay with an AI pilot, but for some reason it can't land properly, and it just nosedives at the end of the runway into the trees. So really, probably the best way to put it is that the value of Prairie Fire isn't really the type of assets you can get. It's the extra detail that the devs have put into those assets. And by that logic alone, I think even the map is worth the purchase price. Just to be able to play that on other modes and not even use the Vietnam assets is going to be worth it. Which actually reminds me about a point that I want to make, which is that being a total conversion mod, the problem with Prairie Fire assets is that they aren't technically available in the vanilla game. So that's something to bear in mind if you are running vanilla public service. It makes it really difficult because clients do have to boot up the game running the DLC, or at least they need to be using the compatibility mod. 
But anyway, finally, the last thing I want to talk about before we get out of here is will this DLC actually succeed where global mobilization failed? And look, it's hard to say because on one hand, this is all really impressive. But on the other hand, Armor 3 is eight years old at this point in time, and it's a game that's famous for its massive collection of free mods. It could be that people jump in and play Prairie Fire for a couple of weeks and then they move back to their usual mod list. Maybe that won't be the case, but I really think the pressure is on the devs now to keep a constant stream of updates coming to hopefully prevent that from happening. But even saying that though, like I said, I think Prairie Fire is still worth it even if you're only playing it solo. Like I said, we're going to get into the game modes probably in more detail in the next video, but what I will say is that there's tons of hours just in the single player, even if you don't even touch multiplayer at all. So look, I'd say if you are thinking about getting Prairie Fire, just get it, especially right now while people are actually interested in it and while servers are still full. It's honestly been a completely new experience for me. I'm not someone that's normally into Vietnam era games, but after almost a week solid of playing it, I'm still looking forward to getting in and playing some more. But anyway, guys, that just about wraps up this review. So thank you as always for watching. And please, if you do want to see more of these videos, make sure you hit the thumbs up and subscribe. Also, leave me a comment and let me know what you think or just hit me up on my socials using the links in the description. And as always, until next time, I'll see you guys later and you have a good one.